Oh my God, you guys are absolutely so adorable. adorable. I don't want to restrain him, I want to just walk him, but I also don't want him to bite me. Hey, good morning everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Lori, guess what? What? Eric, guess what? What? Barry, guess what? What? Jessica, guess what? What? We have another litter of skinks this Yay, morning. Awesome. <laughs> you want to go get them? Yes. All right, let's do it. And I hope you guys don't get bored of pulling baby skinks because I certainly won't. I love starting every day like this. This happens to be a caramel female. Let's see what she has going on. Oh, I see one little infertile here. But oh yeah, she's oh she's got a bunch of babies in there. Oh my God, I remember. I've actually looked at this girl recently. She was full of babies. So oh my God, that's exciting. Look at these. Oh my gosh. Oh. There's a ton of them. Oh my God, this is a beautiful litter. Oh, look at that little monkey right over there. Stop being so cheeky, monkey. That was oh so little. Oh my gosh, too. look at these. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, they are so adorable. And again, that caramel hypo line is just really cool. I went to a caramel, so they should be. Oh, so nice. these are caramel to caramel. So all these babies will come out caramel as they get a little bit of size to them. They'll kind of fade out to this color here. Look at mama. She definitely looks like she definitely had a lot of babies. That's a lot going on right there. She looks mm -hmm. so good though. Oh, what do we got? She's like, no, don't take any more babies. babies. Any more babies? Oh. Hang on a second here. Looks like there might be some under here, possibly. Mm -hmm. Way underneath. There's one little baby. There we go. Any more babies? I tell you what, it's like a little baby hunt. I love these days, for sure. Gotta just check under everything to make sure everything's okay. Check through all the hay. Looks like that's it. I mean, which was really was a really nice litter. Look at these guys. <laughs> They're all sticking their eyes. Oh my God, you guys are absolutely so adorable. adorable. So we've got two, four, six, seven babies, and it looked like one kind of infertile sluggy type of thing. So all in all, seven babies, not that bad. I mean, she's not a really big girl at all, as you can see, but she did really good. These babies look nice and chunky, and they're just so feisty. You little monkey, you, oh my God, these guys are gonna be incredible. And again, that caramel line is really cool because it's that faded, almost hypo-y look to it. So, uh, and these are caramel. Caramel, so these are all little and caramels. Dad looks just like her, so. Dad looks just like her, so should be. They'll beautiful. probably end up looking just like her. Oh my God, what do you think? I mean, all that oh, hard work, all so those awesome. hours. I mean, Jessica sat down here for hours and hours oh watching God. these guys breed, so. It's really awesome to see. Oh my God, that is so cool. has got such a cool little pattern on it. Oh, they are so beautiful, so uh, again, I love starting my days this way. Hopefully every day, well, we're gonna run out of lizards eventually, but uh, this is absolutely awesome. Seven beautiful baby blue tongue skinks. Just had a quick tour in from Delaware and they brought this shirt. It may be my favorite shirt of all time now to the Reptarium and beyond. I'm a huge Tour Story fan, so that is amazing. I'm gonna be sporting this shirt a lot. You guys know I said I wanted some new shirts. You guys are hooking me up. You guys are amazing. And that time of day again, collecting colubrid eggs. This happens to just be a het scaleless corn snake, but she was bred to this beautiful monkey here. Look at that thing. That is actually a granite scaleless. And of course, we had some really good clutches earlier with him, so let's hope that it continues on with this girl. Uh-oh, not so much. What a bummer. I thought for sure I felt so confident about this. This is definitely not the way I want to start the day. We gotta go ahead and just process these eggs regardless. We'll get the sheds, we'll get some water in with her. And let's go ahead and take a look at this disaster clutch right here. What happened? I don't get this. So this is definitely a female issue because the male is obviously a proven animal. He already had two or three beautiful clutches and it looks like this one is legitimately only two fertile eggs. You can see all these slugs. So we got the two eggs here. We've got two, four, six, eight, nine, egg. This is just the reality of breeding snakes, guys. A lot of times when you either watch a video or you see some posts on Facebook, you're only getting like the good stuff. Like, oh, look at this beautiful clutch. The truth is anyone that breeds snakes, lizards, whatever, you're going to have this type of thing. That's just the reality of it. But that's okay. We still have a couple more clutches to go, so I'm sure it'll shape up. I know a lot of you guys want to update on Lucy just to see what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and give you that update. You can see she's exactly the same as she's been. Her back end is a little bit big for sure. And I want you guys to know that I talked to my vet yesterday just about what our next steps are because you know the truth is is that if she wouldn't have laid those two eggs I wouldn't even be concerned right now she's only about 33 days after shed and these guys can literally lay sometimes 40 45 plus days I will say that her back end is looking a little bit more full than what I'd like which makes me feel like she's pushed her eggs down but the weird thing is is that the eggs are right at the vent now I know a few people were like oh you should just take her to the vet now seriously people how do I take that snake to the vet I mean do I just pack her up and try this is like what got a 
poodle here. Obviously, you guys have seen me take Lucy out and do things. I can't take that to the vet. I would never want me to take that out and I could potentially get it hurt. With that said, her advice was to give it another two or three weeks unless something dramatic changes and that's hopefully she will continue to lay. If not, we can try to take the next step. I think what I'm going to do is give it at least another four or five days, maybe even a week before I do anything unless I see her kind of really seeming to stress out and then I may have to literally try to go in there and see if I can aspirate those eggs a little bit, find out why it seems like it's blocked. It's going to be really hard if we end up doing that, but I may have to do that. We'll have to see. Again, the eggs seem to be right by the vent. Usually when an animal is egg bound, which does happen by the way, I mean if you're going to breed snakes, you do have to realize egg binding is going to be part of something that happens. It's not super common, but it does happen. With as many snakes as we produce, we have probably five or six egg bound snakes every single year. It's just the way it goes. It's a numbers game. Unfortunately, this is kind of why I didn't want to breed Lucy in the beginning is I didn't want anything to happen to her. But again, my vet kind of assured me not to freak out that I shouldn't be worried about it right now. Again, I'll keep you guys posted. If we have to do anything dramatic, I'll definitely let you guys know. Continue to keep those positive vibes coming. Uh, but I know a lot of people really wanted the update and I wanted to just cover as much as I could about what myself and my vet talked about. Let's hope this next clutch is better because this is actually a pretty anticipated clutch for me. We had two female to Sarah had scaleless bred to the same. So I'm hoping that we'll get a good clutch and get some actual to Sarah scaleless. Now this is Sarah as you see when I show you this female. Let's hope there's a good clutch of eggs. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. There are a few in fur legs, but that's still much better. You can see she's got that beautiful color and pattern to her. That's the Tessera corn. Wow, I tell you what, she is gorgeous. And there are some infertile eggs in here, but it's not too terribly bad. I'll just pull this clutch out, set it aside. We'll get this out of here again, get some water in with her, set this back up on top, and then we'll take a little bit of a closer look at the actual clutch itself. At first, it looked really good, and then I definitely saw some infertile eggs, but nevertheless, still looks overall pretty good. Looks like we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 good eggs, and two, four, six, seven, seven bad eggs. So 12 good eggs, seven bad eggs. That's still not that bad. That means we have a pretty good shot at Tessera scales, which is going to be absolutely incredible. They've been produced in the past, but we've never produced them. So I'm pretty excited about it. We do have one more female Tessera het scaleless to lay. So hopefully she'll have as good, maybe even a better clutch. And then I think we have one more clutch to collect today. Egg season never gets boring to me. So I am with Kelsey in the dungeon. We have a couple clutches of ball pythons. Yes, we do. What are we starting with? We're starting with a pastel that was bred to a dragonfly. Dragonfly is actually a pastel fire pinstripe, so we can get some super flies and super dragonflies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Let's see what we got here. Oh, she's got a couple eggs out over here, which is fine. We'll just go ahead. It doesn't even look like they'll have rolled because they stuck to the bottom of the paper, but we'll always candle them just to be safe because why not? You know, it only takes a second to candle them. Let's see what else she's got going on in here. She is definitely wrapped up weird. Oh, she's only got a few eggs in there. Oh, it looks like these eggs might have rolled around. See where it looks like there's paper on this, where it was originally maybe more like this. So we're definitely going to have to candle the whole clutch. Looks like this girl kind of rearranged her clutch as it goes. Wasn't a very big clutch, but that's okay. She's a really pretty snake too. So Kelsey's just going to get these eggs off here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll just take these, we'll get these candled up, make sure that all the embryos on the top. But uh, looks like what, five eggs? So five eggs, no slow. It's always a good way to start. Then the last one is actually a double head leucistic scalus. She's already already outside her box and she just definitely does not look happy. It's okay, mom, I promise. It's gonna be okay. Good job, mama. We'll get some water in with her. And she's bred to a leucistic scalus, which of course is this beautiful monkey right here that's in shed that I absolutely love. So the fact that she's double head means that half of them are gonna be leucistic, half of them are gonna be scalus, half of them are gonna be double heads because everything will be double head. I realized that got a little confusing on it. I didn't mean to do that. Let's see what she has here. Okay, it looks like some pretty good eggs. There's not a lot of eggs in here but we have some eggs. Let's see, we've got two really nice, beautiful ones right here. We've got, this one looks really beautiful too. Let's see, just keep on looking through here. Two more look really good here. Those two look like they're really solid. These ones look a little bit bad. I don't think any of these, there's three, and it looks like a fourth that doesn't look good. So these look like slugs here. Looks like we got two, four, five. So about 50%. Okay, we were really doing good at the beginning. <laughs> we are getting hardly any slugs. And that kind of happens. It oscillates throughout the year where you get really good eggs. Then you sometimes get some slugs. Then you get really good eggs. We've got a long, long way to go. I'm sure the season's going to be absolutely incredible. But that's it for Kluber eggs for the day. And next up we have... We have a uh, normal ball python bred to a cinnamon cypress. All right, cinnamon cypress. That is a really pretty animal. So let's see what we have here. Usually the normals lay pretty good sized clutches. Again, another egg out. We'll have to candle that one. Seems to be happening today a little bit. All right, mama, you're okay, sweetheart. You're okay. All right, let's see what she's got here. 
always cool to see eggs. Oh, it looks like a nice clutch too. She's kind of piled them high up for sure. There you go, Mama. You're all right. She's holding on tight. She sure is. She doesn't want to give them up. Come on, it's okay. You can see how like the belly will actually concave just like that, and that actually holds the eggs when they're coiled around them. The eggs actually go, like go into their belly, which is really good. But uh, she looks really good. She looks awesome. Looks like a really nice clutch. Again, no infertility, which is really good. So what do we end up having? Seven eggs. Seven eggs. That's awesome. And again, the cinnamon and cypress are both co-dominant, so we should have some really beautiful cinnamon, some cinnamon cypress, some cypress, and of course normal. So can those eggs get these guys in the incubator, and uh, about 60 days from now gonna have beautiful babies. Good job, Kelsey. Thank you. You guys may remember we put Eric and Mary's Philly in with my guy Nova that wants some attention right now. Well, she definitely looks like she is loaded up with eggs. You can see her over here. So uh, these guys mixed up some sand and reptile prime. Some sand and reptile prime, which is a good kind of thing for her to lay because they want to dig relatively Way deep down. to bury those eggs. Uh, I'm not sure when she'd be ready. She hasn't been scratching that much yet, so we're not really sure. But we figured we'll put this nest box in there now just in case she wants to go in there and hopefully with any luck, we'll get some babies and what are we going to do with them? We're just going to raise them all up? Dude, honestly, yeah, I raise so. them all up. I could never sell one. That's the problem. I'm seriously going to have a whole wall of them. Love them. So wish us luck. We'll keep you guys posted but with any luck we'll get some eggs from this beautiful girl right over here. Come on Nova. What you doing you silly monkey? And I think we maybe put it right all yeah, the way in the back. The back corner. If you want to step up on that rock. Unless you can... Oh yeah. No. You can... yeah, oh perfect. yeah. Perfect. That should be perfect for her. It doesn't look that great, unfortunately, but she can go down in there and she can lay her eggs. I don't think Nova's gonna mind at all. You're a good boy. Are you gonna be a daddy, Nova? And look at how beautiful that girl looks up there. So, uh, fingers crossed we get some baby frillies. That time again to cut chicken strips nails, because the one thing about chicken strip is we work with it, but it likes to run, and when it has really sharp nails, it just kind of rips you up. It's really bad, because when you first take him out, he is absolutely out of his mind, and then he calms down pretty quick. So, uh, wish me luck. I have a feeling that it's gonna be a lot of high energy for sure, especially because he's right underneath the basking light, which means that he's very, very warm. It's gonna be a lot of work. So here we go. Chicken strip, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, okay. And again, it's like I always say, I don't want to restrain him. I want to just walk him, but I also don't want him to bite me. So I'm gonna kind of slowly, and gosh, those nails are so sharp, trust me. When you're doing this when the nails aren't sharp, it's so much better. But again, I'm just putting really minor pressure on. I'm trying not to hardly press on him at all so he doesn't stress out, right? So we're just kind of walking, and already you can see he's slowing down, he's slowing down. It's okay, buddy, and oh my gosh, my hands are just getting ripped up. But you see how quickly he's calming down already? I'm gonna just work with him just for a little while longer, because every now and then, he'll still have a few more explosions in him, and then once we've gotten to a point where he's really chill, I'll have Bruce come with some little cat nail clippers. I'll have him clip off that little tiny dagger that's at the end of his nails that is just like, bro. All right, here we go. It's all right, it's all right. And it's just ripping me up. I mean, look at all the little claw marks in me all over the place, but that's all right. It's okay, chicken strip. You can see how far he's come. And again, it's just a lot easier to take him out when we've actually clipped his nails. I think he's calm enough now where I'm gonna go ahead and let Bruce help me out a little bit here. So. Just very gently, you can take one side. And again, we're just gonna clip that little tiny thing off right there. And these cat nail clippers are perfect for this job right here. There it goes. And again, just if you just snip that off, then what happens is when you're handling him, he's not digging into you. It's really a very different experience. And you can see how, I mean, I'm not restraining him. I'm not like, I mean, look at open-handed right here. He's not doing anything. That's really important. I always talk about building trust, but two more claws to go before uh, we're done here. And if you ever clip too short, just like a dog, you can use, there's like stop bleed. There's a few different things like that. You can even use cornstarch and it'll stop that bleeding. Because it does happen. Sometimes you'll cut it just a little bit short and you'll have a little bit of blood. It's not going to hurt the animal at all. And just use a little cornstarch or again, that stop bleed that you can get at the store for when you're cutting either dog or cat or and parrots nails but uh, after this is gonna be done way better for us trust me now we just got the back legs and I'm telling you what, these guys are unbelievable daggers, man. It's crazy how just about a month after you clip them, they just come back into these 
really sharp claws again. And uh, like I said, it's not a pleasant experience holding something like that that is just gonna rip into every single time it moves on you. And again, that's why you know that these guys are just adept climbers, right? Is those little nails are great for digging into trees and other surfaces so that they can just scale a wall like nothing. But again, you don't want them to scale your hand because that hurts a lot. Again, we'll just get him into a position where he's happy. There you go, buddy. Chicken strip is looking so good. All right, and there it is, guys. I mean, that's simple. I mean, no problems at all. Again, really chill. We want to make sure that we spend a little bit of time with him, kind of reinforce the fact that, hey, we didn't restrain you, we didn't pull on you, we didn't do anything like that. And then we always end each session with a very gentle, kind of letting him go on his own so that he feels like the session went very well. There you go, chicken strip. It's cool. You're all right, buddy. You're okay. There you go. All right, buddy. Good job, bud. And there it is. We have to do this about once a month with all of our monitor lizards just so that we don't get all tore up. And then when we actually let people hold things, not that chicken strip gets held by a lot of people, but then at least they don't get ripped up too. So uh, easy peasy. I hope that you guys enjoyed the vlog and have an amazing day. I love you guys so much. Be kind to someone. And I promise I'll see you tomorrow.